All the best programmers in the world love JavaScript, while all the worst programmers in the world love to hate JavaScript. I don't understand why that is because I'm a hater myself, but today the JavaScript world just leveled up big time with the release of Dino 2. Many people thought Dino was about to go extinct after it was hit by an asteroid named Bun, but now it's back with a vengeance and provides the most polished back-end JavaScript experience in the world. Not only is it now backwards compatible with Node.js and NPM, but most importantly, it's got a new logo that can dramatically improve the quality of your code. In today's video, we'll break down all of its new features and find out if it's finally time to take Node.js behind the barn. It is September 24th, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. A lot of people make fun of JavaScript because it has multiple competing server runtimes like Node, Dino, and Bun, when really it should have zero runtimes and only ever be used in the browser to trigger pop-up ads. But competition is good, and even languages like Python have CPython, PyPy, and RustPython, and C++ has multiple compilers like GCC and Clang. For over a decade, Node.js was the only game in town. But then one day, its original creator, Ryan Dahl, realized that it was all f***ed up and decided to shift the letters around to create a new runtime called Dino. The killer feature on the first iteration was TypeScript support out of the box. You could create a TS file and run it, with no TS config or compile step required. But nowadays, you can even do that in Node.js. So why didn't everybody just drop Node.js and switch to Dino four years ago? The problem is that it wasn't fully compatible with Node.js and NPM. Many of your favorite packages just wouldn't work. That motivated a new runtime called Bun to come out of nowhere and seize the opportunity to not only provide TypeScript support, but also NPM compatibility. Well, now Dino 2 has thrown the gauntlet down yet again by providing full backwards compatibility with Node and NPM. Like, check this out. I have a basic API written in Express.js in plain JavaScript. One easy way to take advantage of Dino right away is to run lint, which will have it scan my code and tell me what sucks about it. You can forget about ES lint, or run Dino format and forget about prettier. Or better yet, I can start writing better code by switching to TypeScript by simply changing the file extension to .ts. Then instead of npm run, I use Dino run, and the code runs perfectly without having to mess around with a TS config. And Dino also forces us to give the script proper permissions to access the network. That's pretty cool, but Dino 2 now also also fully understands the package JSON file, and it can even work with mono repos using npm workspaces. And that's huge if you're someone who wants to use Dino, but you'll never escape the technical debt of your existing project, because now you can run Dino install, and it works with every package and meta framework like Next.js, Svelte, and so on. But you should also know that Dino has its own package registry called JSR, where every package on there natively supports TypeScript. But one of the main goals of the runtime is for you to install fewer packages, because you don't need any more packages in your node modules full or mining Bitcoin or holding your machine for ransom. In Dino 2, the standard library is fully stable and eliminates the need for tools like Jest for testing, Chalk for CLI formatting, or Lodash for utilities, just to name a few of the STDs you can get here. The amount of mental boilerplate you end up removing with Dino is pretty staggering, but it also has some more exotic commands that you'll want to know about. Like Dino Compile can take your JavaScript code and turn it into a binary that runs on Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, allowing you to LARP as a compiled language programmer. What's even cooler, though, is that that Dino has integrated the Jupyter kernel from the Python ecosystem, a tool that allows developers to create interactive notebooks where you execute code block by block. That's never really caught on in the JavaScript world, but now that you can just run Dino Jupyter, that might change in the future. Now, I know I've been doing a lot of shilling, and this video is not sponsored, but what are the actual drawbacks of switching from Node to Dino? Well, prior to version 2, its number one weakness was the Node NPM compatibility, but now that that's a thing of the past, I'm having a hard time coming up with bad things to say about it. It's free and open source, although Though it's maintained by a for-profit company that wants to sell you hosting and things like that. In contrast, Node is part of the OpenJS Foundation and supported by tons of big companies, which is essential if you're an enterprise, but Dino is just now rolling out its own long-term support schedule. But if you guys don't buy their hosting, the company might run out of money and Ryan Dahl will have to move on to his next project, Odin, the Node.js Dino killer, and then on to Endo after that. And he'll keep doing that until he reaches the final anagram of done. This has been The Code Report, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.